Hey, I'm Felissa Rose, and you're watching Keto and Crime. I get questions a lot about in which order do I do the Daybell novels? Does it matter? Um, or in which order do I watch your videos on the Daybell uh, not novels? So it actually makes sense to me. Well, there's a couple of different ways you can do that. Um, you can read them as three separate series and just realize they, they sort of have a connection, but you can enjoy them as three separate series, such as the Emma Chronicles, and then you can read either of the other two in any order that you'd like, you know, first book to last book, and understand that it's three stories that have a connection. Or you can read them with the understanding that it's essentially the same story from two different perspectives. And you can do it the true geek way and watch it in successive order, moving in and out of the series so that it makes the most sense as one cohesive story. And the reason I bring this up and the reason I'm having you watch footage of The Walking Dead, one of my favorite television shows of all time, I love The Walking Dead universe, not comparing Daybell to Walking Dead in quality, but I, I do think that's important to make this connection. When we enter this universe of The Walking Dead with the original series, and you see the very first episode, which you're seeing here, the very first episode is called Days Gone By, you see Rick Grimes, our main hero, awakening after an event. He's waking up in the hospital after at least six weeks in a coma to see that the whole world has gone to pot, and we're now in the middle of a zombie apocalypse. But he does not know what happened. And then over the course of the first season, which is very short, you learn more about what is going on. You learn more about the disease, the illness, and how society is going to move forward with Rick as a leader of one band of survivors. And we don't really learn a whole lot about our main characters in The Walking Dead until season two, because season one is so short. So the reason I'm saying this, if you pick up with Standing in Holy Places, the first apocalyptic series by Chad Daybell, you're going to pick up much like you did as if you started watching The Walking Dead. Something has happened, something's going on, but you, you know, it kind of takes you a minute to pick up on who the characters are and what they are. But if you want, then want to learn more about the characters, that's where the Emma Chronicles would come in and you would learn more of the backstory of some of the characters in Standing in Holy Places. And if you read them in order, you're going to know their backstory plus the events. However, there is still some time missing. Just like with Rick here, the everything that happened to him while he was in the hospital is missing. We don't know what happened. We know that something happened, but we don't know what happened. And that's where the other AMC series, Fear the Walking Dead, comes in. You can watch, you can watch it and see what happened in that six weeks prior to Rick waking up. Though it's in another part of the country, we assume that it was the same in all major cities as Rick's in Atlanta, whereas the group in Fear the Walking Dead is in Los Angeles. So you can assume it's all pretty much the same. And so if you go and watch that, you can fill in what happened to Rick, to the world while Rick was in the hospital. And then from there, after you kind of catch up with the first three seasons of Fear of the Walking Dead, you're kind of caught up with the Walking Dead. And then you could literally watch each episodes of each series interchangeably, swapping back and forth and be on the same timeline. So that's a little bit like what the Chad Daybell novels are. If you read the Emma Chronicles and then start Standing in Holy Places, you're going to then be able to read the first two books of that, switch over to Times of Turmoil, read a couple of books there, come back to Standing in Holy Places, and you'll be able to fill in all the holes. You'll have the characters' backstories, the prequel to what is happening in the world, that is Chad Daybell's The Vision of the Apocalypse, all the way through to them finally catching up and being on the same timeline. So that's essentially what it is. I hope that makes sense. And now I'm going to break it down a little bit further for you and tell you exactly what order to read them in if you want to be like a geek and understand it. Let's go. Hey everyone, I want to tell you about a great new sponsor for the channel, Keto Crisp. They reached out to me wanting to help me get back on my keto journey. As you know, I've had some issues and they know that sweets are a problem for me. So I have partnered with them after sampling them and they are really good bars. I highly recommend them. Filling, not too sweet, but just sweet enough. So if you're on a keto or a carnivore or 
low carb lifestyle they are the perfect bar but moreover what I want to talk about is the is the company itself Adam Brenham was is the founder and he has suffered from cerebral palsy as well as obesity most of his life and yet he still persevered and founded his own company I think just the whole keto crisp brand is a monument to the human spirit and I just wanted to point that out that I only choose to partner with brands that I really believe in I both believe in their product I believe in Adam and I believe in the, really believe in their motto it's about what you can do not what you can't and with that being said I'm proud to welcome a new sponsor to the channel you can try them out for a 20% discount just like most keto bars they're a bit pricier than the junk you're gonna find in the supermarket but well well worth it and so you can get 20% off using my discount code which I will link down in the description below and I look forward to doing many more collaborations with Keto Crisp. Thank you so much everyone. And I really Hey everyone, and that's what we're gonna do today. I'm going to do a over depth overview of Chad Daybell's book Extended Galaxy, if you can call it that. The Daybell Universe, uh, literary universe. Um, as I'd said earlier, you really have to look at these three series, and there's three separate ones. There is the Emma trilogy. There is the Times of Turmoil, and then they're standing on holy ground. Now, originally, Chad Daybell said that he actually wrote the Emma Trilogy first. Now, maybe he did, but when it comes to the time of publication, actually standing on holy ground, the apocalyptic series that features the characters from the Emma Trilogy actually came first. They were published between... 2007 and 2009 and then the third apocalypse the second apocalyptic series the third total series the times of turmoil were published between 2012 and 2018 and the Aaron for Emma books were actually published 2019 so he may have written it first but it wasn't published until last so I don't know if that was a lie on his part or whether it just the date of writing versus publication was a little off but so he wrote three different series and they are essentially all the same story with different viewpoints um, and as I had said in my little intro you have to take it like that you can read these series standalone or listen to my videos standalone as a series and uh, roughly understand the story but to really understand what's going on you have to treat them as a series just like with Walking Dead versus Fear the Walking Dead Walking Dead you understand that something has happened and then we get to know the characters as the uh, thing goes on that's kind of what uh, happens in Standing in Holy Places you understand that something has happened or is about to happen very quickly very shortly and then you kind of see how these characters react without having a ton of backstory on them. So if you want the backstory on them, you have to go back and read these three books, which are essentially the origin stories of two to three of the main characters in the Standing in Holy Places book. Uh, so like with Walking Dead, that would be kind of the introduction you get to the main characters over the course of the season. The first two seasons, you kind of develop an understanding of the characters, their history, where they've been but if you want to understand what happened just prior to the events the events between the Emma trilogy and the first book of standing in holy places you have to actually read the second apocalyptic series the third total series times of turmoil it fills in all those holes as to what happened in between the two books though to an entirely different set of characters uh, just like Fear the Walking Dead. The first three seasons kind of tells us what happened during that six-week 
period where Rick was in a coma that we didn't see society falling and going to heck. And then once you get to the later seasons, it's actually running concurrently with the original Walking Dead series. Same here. If you read these and then you read, if you read the Emma series and then you read the first two books of the Times of Turmoil series, then you're essentially caught up to where Standing in Holy Places begins, and then you could literally swap the books in and out, one and the other, for the series to get a full picture of the entire story. But Tracy, what is the story? The story is essentially his interpretation, Chad Daybell's interpretation of the end times, whether that is um, some taken from the Bible, some taken from the Book of Mormon. But we are essentially seeing T Chad Daybell's vision for the end of times. And as we know, he was very heavily into uh, prepping, into the Avowal Network, um, and definitely into Biblical and Book of Mormon prophecy, as well as everybody on, in Clown Town that he hung around with and was as well. Now, is this the way the Mormons see the, the true, uh, the Mainstream LDS see the end of the world. I'll have to leave that for El Mom to answer, but I'm telling you his story from a literary perspective. So, with that being said, let's dive into the first series of books, the Emma Trilogy. Basically, the Emma Trilogy is uh, a set of books that covers the stories of Emma Dalton and her. Younger brother, Doug. Now, Emma is the two that are on two of the novels. The first one, An Aaron for Emma, and the second one, Escape to Zion. And Doug is on the bottom one there, Aaron for uh, Doug's Dilemma. Now, basically, we've covered two of these, and basically, they deal with time travel. Each of these characters going back and discovering something about their ancestors that needed to be rectified and them rectifying it and then in the third novel which i'm reading now emma is catapulted forward into the celestial kingdom into new zion to kind of fulfill a purpose that she has in building the eternal kingdom during the end of the world which is played out in the next series standing on holy places now we do get the background on not only emma and doug but their parents as well as Emma's wife, Tad, who is Emma's husband, Tad, that is represented in the Standing in, on Holy Places doctor, uh, series as well. Now, um, Chad has a daughter named Emma, so I'm assuming that he named this character after her. But um, I can't say where the mission came from, but because Tammy, uh, he often said Tammy has a special mention beyond the veil. I have a feeling that this was kind of crafted over what he thought Tammy's purpose was and probably why he thought fit to dispatch her early to fulfill that purpose, if you know what I mean. Now, Doug, he his mission and everything runs a little concurrently to what Chad uh, did as far as his mission and what he thought thought he was destined to do. So I'm thinking Doug is a personification of Chad. So, and if you'll see that later on in Standing on Holy Places where Doug just goes off the chains and being special to God, you'll see that. And that probably has everything to do with Chad's ego. But that is an errand for Emma, Doug's Dilemma, and Escape to Zion, the Emma trilogy. Written first, published last. But still, the prequel to the next series, Standing in Holy Places. The Standing in Holy Places series, which I have read uh, here, and I will link playlists for all of this uh, down below. You can find most of them in my Daybell Case playlist, but I also create some special playlists and put all these books in it so that you can find them and actually watch them in my suggested order if you would like. Now, this is a series chronicling the end times from the time of great uh, trouble, from the times that the LDS, the Mormons, the faithful saints are called out by their wards to go into hiding from what's about to come, straight through to the f Christ's return, the founding of the city, the special cities and all that stuff, and everything that takes place in between, including Armageddon. Now. The difference between this and the other 
uh, um, apocalyptic series that he wrote is this kind of picks up midway uh, like a lot of the preparation has already been done and this kind of picks up from the time the saints are called away so you don't get to see a whole lot of the preparation for this as you do in the other series and then from there they move to living in the celestial kingdoms they fight a great battle against the russians and the uh and the china uh, and the chinese who are kind of the antagonist to kind of secure um uh, america as a holder of some of the celestial cities so they fight that battle you see it's kind of sparsed over but you do see that happen it has the exact same outcome as that same battle fought in the other series but this series goes a little bit further it goes past that into the rise of all the celestial cities it goes to the lost tribes of uh, jerusalem being brought home the lost tribes of israel being brought home by lds of course from all over the world and becoming um standing in place for christ to transfer the keys of the kingdom to them and then back and then the end they fight the final battle against the true antichrist and then after that you know it's christ's kingdom on earth so this goes all the way through the beginning of the trouble through judgment and christ is in control and everything's over so this series takes those same characters from the emma trilogy and brings them all the way through that so you see a little bit of their normal life and if you can call chad daybill's mind normal life they start out with their normal everyday lives in the emma trilogy and then we see them go through the entire span of the end times with absolutely no stopping from two great battles through the end so that is the standing in holy places and i think that he probably intended this to be his crowning achievement his magnum opus so to speak so this one to me especially the last two were kind of hard to get through in my opinion um he definitely kind of scoffed over the battles a little bit in my opinion i think he could have made it a whole lot more interesting if he had done that but still it's still overall a chad daybell novel which is a convoluted mess but this is the characters from the previous series all the way through and then there's the third apocalyptic series which was published last or between this one and Aaron for emma the emma series this next uh, series was published and this is times of turmoil this is totally different characters I, that makes sense because i think uh, he wrote this after standing in holy places so i'm sure he was trying to get more in depth into the story so he used different characters now this one picks up before the events of of standing in holy places so between the emma trilogy and what happens in standing in holy places is this series at least the first two books we see all the preparation that the uh, LDS Church makes to protect the saints, to put them in the protected camps for the end of the world. We see the United States government fall. We see the disease that is released by the Chinese to make that happen and the Russians. We see the invasion of the United States uh, by China and Russia and basically Iran, all of the all of the countries that we consider enemies today for the most part or frenemies. They invade the U.S. in this book. Those same uh occurrences are talked about in standing in holy places but it's already passed so this kind of shows you what happened up until the point that standing in holy places really kicks into high gear so especially the last two i actually enjoyed the last two of these more than the others because there was a lot of battles and there was a lot of uh a lot of good storytelling in my opinion uh these this to me is by far the best series that he wrote even though it's not a masterpiece it's better than the others and this kind of picks up like the events of this book is glossed over really quickly in the first two books of the other series where this one takes those same events and stretches them out with different people but you have to understand that this is sort of happening sort of at the same time 
as the other as the other novel as well, even though it fills in some of the prequel information. So that's Times of Turmoil. And then we're going to delve into the purpose of this video, telling you in what's the best way, in my opinion, to read it. Now, if you want to read them as three distinct series, all with three distinct stories that are in, interrelated, or even as parts of two stories, you can do that. And by that, you just read them in order. Read the, the Emma Chronicles or the Emma Trilogy, then read Standing in Holy Places, then read Times of Turmoil, and you'll see that they're related, but yet they're two distinct stories. But if you're like me, you like to kind of put it all together. It's kind of like I watched Walking Dead, and I'm finishing Fear the Walking Dead, and so I see kind of how they fit together. And so in my opinion, there's a good way to watch them to kind of give you the whole story. And that's kind of what I'm going to do with this as well, so that you can see from beginning to end kind of what happens. So if I wanted to listen to my video summaries or even read these books, this is the way I would read them. I would read all of the Emma Chronicles. Then I would read The Great Gather, which is all prequel, all origin. Then I would read The Great Gathering, which is the first book in The Standing in Holy Places, which kind of sets up what's happening to Emma uh, and her family during, as we go into the end times scenario. There's some mentions of some of the things that happened in the uh, Times of Turmoil series in there, but I would read that book next. Then I would read Evading Babylon and Martial Law, which are the first two books in the Times of Turmoil. So you can kind of see the things happening that happened just before the Great Gathering. Also some of the things that are happening, but the Great Gathering does not go into as much detail. These two books do. So you can see the saints leaving for their camps. You can see um, the white camps and the blue camps. What's the difference? The, the LDS network of providing food, which after conversations with El Mom, I know is they do have a prepper network. <laughs> so it, it's not, not in So you see how all that happens. And then you see what happens with the release of the plague that comes before the invasion of the United States and how that happened. And then you kind of see society kind of crumble or start to crumble in these two books, kind of like the first three seasons of Fear of the Walking Dead, you see the collapse of the United States government because of the zombie plague. Same thing here. And then after I read those, I would go back to Standing in Holy Places and read The Celestial City. You'll see the building of some of the, the safe cities and the safe towns for the saints. And then I would read Days of Fury because from, from Times of Turmoil because these kind of go hand in hand. You'll see the building of the safe cities and the setup of Christ's new government, you know, overseen by the LDS Church, of course. And then you'll also see preparations for the battle against the invading armies that are invading the U.S. And then from here, you would go rise to Zion and reclaiming liberty, which you will see more of those cities rise up, the preparations for Christ's return, and uh, the what's going on in the Middle East at the same time as... Uh, the United, the Mormon army is kicking China and Russia's butt here in our country and reclaiming liberty. And then you finish up with Keys to the Kingdom, which basically shows everything from Armageddon through to Christ's return and judgment. And that's the way I would definitely read them. Absolutely. Um, to me, it's the best way. You kind of see that it is one big story with different characters, different points of view. And I hope you enjoyed that. I just thought this would be a good uh, little quickie video. And uh, I've had a lot of questions about it, so I thought I would just answer them. And with that being said, until next time, keto and crime.